It is Friday and we are wrapping up our series. We're talking about one player from every single NFL team that is currently being undervalued in fantasy football. Make sure you smash that subscribe button. We got a lot of fun content coming your way, like our survivor pool, our weekly DFS tournaments, a lot of fun content. So make sure you smash that subscribe button. We're gonna try to compete against all of you guys out there. Now we're hopping into the NFC West, the final division. If you wanna check out the other divisions where we covered every single NFL team up to this point, Go check them out. They're all linked down below. We really appreciate all the love and support you guys have been showing. But let's get into it. We're talking about the 49ers today. Before we're going to start off with the 49ers. And we're talking about Debo Samuel. And man, he's being picked wide receiver 41, pick 107. And I think the disrespect's got to stop somewhere. I mean, I guarantee you by maybe the time you're watching this, or maybe by the time you're drafting, Debo Samuel has moved up some drafts as more people, maybe more knowledgeable people draft because anyone that's drafting right now probably should be waiting as you saw what happened to Travis Etienne, obviously what happened to Cam Akers earlier in the preseason. But let's get back to Debo Samuel. That's why we're here. Now, Debo Samuel, he's about as good, he's very good after the catch when, when in the NFL. There aren't many better players in the NFL than him. Now you look at it, Brandon Ayuk. Everyone loves Brandon Ayuk currently being drafted wide receiver 23-ish, somewhere around there. Everyone's high on him, but I think there's a bigger, there's a big gap in between their fantasy where they're getting drafted, whereas I think there's a smaller gap in terms of their fantasy football points that they will score. Now you look at Debo, he might only have a total of 12, 10 air yards. He might even have negative air yards, which that just means where he catches the ball, but they love to get the ball to him in space. When I mean, you look at him in the in the Super Bowl back in 2019, he could have arguably been their MVP if they hadn't lost that game to the Chiefs. He had five receptions, three carries, total of 92 yards. He was a beast. The Chiefs couldn't tackle him, and that's why they love to get him the ball in space. Now, last year, we had to talk about it. He struggled with injuries. Now, he was... He's not very good. That's because he played in basically six games. He played in the seventh, but got injured basically in the first quarter. So I won't even count that game. Played in six games, finished with double digit points in four of those six games. And he, he had a very good, he was good in those six weeks. But like I said, he was injured the whole week. Now, I do believe they will be, he will be healthier this year. And I do think Debo Samuel is a sleeper in a lot of fantasy football leagues. Currently being drafted wide receiver 41. I just don't think there's 40 better wide receivers in fantasy football than this guy. He offers you a very high floor that a lot of the wide receivers in the same range do not give you. So that's why I don't mind locking in Debo Samuel. He could be your wide receiver maybe three or four on your roster. and wouldn't mind that because I think he'll be locked for like eight to 12 points every single week, which is very rare for someone this low on the wide receiver depth chart. And I'm going to get in a lot of boom or bust guys in this range, but I do think Debo Samuel has a good chance given how they like to get the ball to him in space. Moving on to the Seahawks. Talking about Tyler Lockett, currently wide receiver 19, pick 53. Now last year, 100 receptions, 1,054 yards and 10 touchdowns, wide receiver eight in fantasy football. Yep. That was Tyler Lockett last year. I know 100 receptions. You're like, what the? Now, for the purpose of this segment, I want to talk about one player that is, will finish above their ADP, and I think Tyler Lockett will be that. I think he'll be a top 18 wide receiver. Like I said last year, he was wide receiver 8. Now, he'll be above top 18. There won't be 18 better wide receivers in fantasy football than him. It's just that it's going to be the most frustrating top 18 wide receiver fantasy football seasons that will come. I mean, if you had him last year, this guy was max boom or bust. Just go look at his game log. Trust me. Look at the game log and you will understand what I mean. He has like a 50 point scoring game in there. But then he has a couple two or three points. That's what he does. I mean, he's he's a much better best ball wide receiver than he is like a normal every day, week starter. Very good for daily fantasy if you're trying to start, you know, trying to strike big and win the big pots of tournament plays. But it is not, it's just frustrating to have him on your fantasy football team. Now, I won't have him on a lot of my fantasy football rosters, but I wanted to mention him because I do think the Seahawks offense they struggled towards the back half of the year last year. I think they will be much more improved this year, but it's still question marks. I mean, still Russell Wilson will obviously be great and he'll finish as a top five, six, seven quarterback in the NFL. And then you have DK Metcalf. Chris Carson's pretty underrated as well, as long as he can stay healthy, which he's more or less pretty healthy, but you know, he always has those random injury scares. I do like Tyler Lockett, just won't have him on a lot of fantasy football teams. But if you're in best ball format, don't mind taking him because this guy will single-handedly win you some weeks in that format. Moving on to the Cardinals, start with an unsexy player. James Conner, currently being drafted, running back 36, pick 128. Now, I could have came in here, talked about AJ Green, who I took us under in my future bets video, so go check out that video. And, I, you know, I could talk about DeAndre Hopkins, but who wants to hear me talk about DeAndre Hopkins currently being drafted as a top three wide receiver? Kyler Murray, like... QB three or four, if that. And then I'm not talking about Chase Edmonds, but we will mention him. Now, James Conner, he's going to be assuming the Kenyon Drake role, I believe, in this offense, where Kenyon Drake, he burned a lot of fantasy football owners last year. People drafted him really high. And really, I mean, he was running back 16, 10 total touchdowns. I think it was just that he had a lot of bad games in there mixed with a couple good ones that people were just frustrated. Now, James Conner, he has an injury history. Now, whether that's bad luck or maybe that's his play style because he's always looking to rough people up, lower his shoulder, and truck those people. 
I think he's due for a better season in terms of his health. Now you look at it, he'll get some time to rest. Chase Edmonds is there currently being drafted as running back 22-ish. And I just don't think, I think it's pretty clear. The Cardinals do not trust Chase Edmonds to be the running back one, be that guy, the workhorse back on this team. James Conner is going to have a big role. And I think he's going to be a touchdown vulture, someone that will come in here and just steal a lot of first and second down work, steal a bunch of touchdowns from Chase Edmonds. And it'll be very frustrating if you're a Jace, Chase Edmonds owner, which I probably won't have a lot of stock in the Chase Edmonds train this year, but I do think he'll be useful in fantasy football. But I think James Conner is a better value at his current ADP. Now, while I don't suggest taking, you know, Conner and relying on him as a weekly fantasy football starter, he's a good RB3 upside with some top 25, top 20 upside. If something does happen to Chase Edmonds. This is a guy that was like running back six or eight a couple of years back, just as unfortunately had a couple injury plagued seasons. I do think he has value in fantasy football this season. And I don't mind scooping him up towards, you know, I mean, you're drafted in pick 128. You're on the 12th, 13th round as a flyer on your bench. And this guy could have some weekly production, maybe for bye week fill ins. Very similar to a guy like Kareem Hunt. I mean, it's not outside of the realm of possibility to say James Conner will score more fantasy points than Kareem Hunt this year. I don't think that's as crazy as some people listening to this might seem. Now, moving on to the final player in this division, the Rams, Sony Michelle. Now, the newly acquired running back from the New England Patriots, he's going to have a bigger fantasy role than Darrell, than Darrell Henderson fans really want to admit. Now, for starters, it's pretty clear. The Rams are not committed on Henderson. They don't want him to be the run workhorse back. And that showed with the injury that he, I think he got a t thumb injury earlier on in this preseason. Now, Michelle, he hasn't lived up to the hype so far in New England. I mean, he had a great Super Bowl run for the New England Patriots his rookie year. But ever since that, he just has, you know, been injured with his knees or something's gone wrong. Or he just hasn't really taken this backfield by storm like some Patriots fans. And I, I'm sure their management was hoping that he would do. Now, he's looked good this whole preseason. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see him take a hold of this back. Backfield. I mean, we saw another Georgia running back take a hold of this Rams backfield a couple of years back. Todd Gurley, that is. Would not surprise me to see Michelle. I'm sure they'll be a little more conservative with his touches given his injury history, but this is a guy that's going to score more fantasy points than people would like to think. Now, he's what's currently, and you see on the graphic on the left, he's currently being undrafted in a lot of fantasy football leagues, and that's because I'm using the ESPN ADP at the moment. He, he was undrafted. Now, I do believe he will slide up to drafts, maybe finish in that 40, 45-ish range, but I think this guy's got as much upside as a guy like Kenyon Drake, who we just talked about a second ago, or even like the Jets' Michael Carter. Now, he'll have a lot more fantasy value every single week than those two guys. Now, I'm not necessarily saying, you know, Sony Michelle. RB1, draft him, get him onto your team every single time. But I do think this guy's going to have value. Might he play like a Malcolm Brown role who's now in Miami? Yeah, and I'm, I would argue, and I don't think it's a hot take, that he's more talented than Malcolm Brown. This is a guy that averaged 5.7 yards per carry last year on 79 touches. Could, would it surprise me to see, I mean, him get 15 touches a game? No, that's not crazy. Malcolm Brown was getting a ton of work like that and punching it in for a lot of annoying touchdowns as a Cam Akers or Darrell Henderson owner last year. Would not surprise me to see Sony Michelle used in that aspect. Now, I do think Darrell Henderson will have more big plays, but Malcolm Brown or Sony Michelle could handle a lot of the early down work. Wouldn't surprise me at all. I mean, a fourth round pick, which is what they gave up to get him, which is, I believe is a conditional, but it will likely turn into that. That's a hefty value and a hefty premium to pay for a running back like this. I do think they'll use Sony Michelle. Sean McVay is not dumb. He knows he knows Sony Michelle is a very talented player. That's why I don't mind scooping him up towards the end of my fantasy football draft, which is probably where he'll end up going. Now, that'll do it for the NFC West. It will do it for this all of these videos. All eight divisions, well, seven. The other seven divisions will all be linked down below. Go check out those videos. See who I'm picking for your favorite team, whether it's the Vikings, the Jets, the Browns, the Steelers, you name it. I, got, I listed a player from every single team down below, except for one. Sorry, Giants fans. This has been Austin. I'll catch you guys again tomorrow. Peace out.